Hi, my name is Valentina V. I'm an independent filmmaker here in Los Angeles. And I'm Ray Barchenner, and I work at LumaForge. Today we're going to be talking about Premiere Pro's shared project workflow using the LumaForge Jellyfish. Shared projects is a way that you and your collaborators can all edit the same project using the same shared storage. You want to make sure that you have all the right settings for a shared project. So we are going to go into the Premiere Pro preferences under shared projects and make sure that enable project locking is selected and then uh, give ourselves usernames. I will go Raybar. And I will go V. Perfect. We'll start by diving into creating a project from scratch and showing you guys how shared projects are set up. We will go into Premiere and create a new project. Title this, my working project, which will be my name, working. And we will save this in our shared jellyfish storage area. There you go, and okay. Once we have that project, we can create a new shared project. Once that is done, we will name it, and what should we name this project? Luma Shared. Luma Shared. Once we have the shared project set up, we will import some footage. So Raybar's been working for a bit. He's created a bunch of projects for me, a bunch of shared projects as dailies, and I can import them all into my project. One piece of advice that I would have if you are working with shared projects and master projects is to drag your shared projects into your master project to keep it all labeled and straight. So right now, I don't have any shared projects because I didn't drag them in. So I'm going to undock this panel and then go over to the dailies project and drag all of those shared projects under dailies into my working project. When you're working on a shared project, you want to be able to know who has control of which project bin. In your project, right next to name, right click and hit metadata display. And you're going to type in project or project sharing and the project locked box will show. You can mark that and hit OK. What this does is it shows who has control of that folder. So right here, classroom is being controlled by V. And as you can see on my computer currently, if I go into this shared project for classroom and I'll undock the panel so that you can see it a little better. On the bottom left corner, I have the little lock and it is unlocked for me. It is green, which means that I am working on it. He can see it, but it's read only. He can't set in and out points. He can't change anything in the project organization wise or within any sequence that's in that project. Only I can. So if I've been working on the classroom project for a while, maybe I'll make some edits and I'm done with that. I will lock it and I will save it. And after I've locked and saved it, the bottom left lock turns red for me, which means that I can no longer edit it. And for you. So I'm going to go into classroom and right at the top, I have a little indicator, which is like a little caution mark. So when I hit the unlock button, it gives me this, the project has been modified since it was last loaded. Do you wish to reload it? And I would like to say yes, because I want to see the changes that V has made. So once it's reloaded on the bottom corner here, I have the unlocked green project is writable. So now I can get to work on this while V goes and does something else. So he's working on classroom. I could be working on the sequence for beach. So if I go into the sequence for beach and say I set a marker and I edit it and I call it like uh, first half and make it four seconds long and I make it purple. So I'm done with this sequence and I'm going to click on the lock again and it's asking me, yes, do you want to save it? Yes, I do. That lock turns red for me. If I go into sequences for the classroom project, if you have locked it, I should be able to click on more options next to the caution sign and I should be able to refresh my project with all of the changes that you've made. You should be able to refresh mine. Perfect. Going to open up Beach, and in here I see that V has put in a marker. That's the cool thing about this is somebody can put a marker in, V could save her project bin, and then I can go back in and move her markers around, or I might leave it, or it might be a note from my editor saying, hey, 
can you go find this clip from that bin or whatnot. So I'm gonna just leave it there. So here inside of my working project, I've dragged all the shared projects from the dailies. And I think it's important to mention that if I start doing things within my working project, like creating new bins, for example, I'll call this one graphics. And this is a regular bin, whereas the shared project bin has a little arrow on it. If I lock this and I save this, then Raybar, he won't be able to see my graphics folder in his working folder because it's not a shared project folder, it's just a regular folder. So the benefits of shared projects in Premiere is really the fact that as an AE, I can go in and sync dailies, create markers, organize the project, and then have my editor, V, get on and not have to deal with any of that stuff and can be like, hey, I'm ready to go. And for editors or teams of multiple editors, you can divide and conquer. You can work on one scene while somebody else works on another scene. Uh, also, if you have a plugin that another person doesn't have on their machine, like Pluralize, he can sync all the sound on Pluralize and it'll all be synced on my machine. I won't even ever need to buy the plugin. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoy this brief intro on shared projects in Premiere Pro. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See ya. Bye. Yeah. Cut. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs>